Okay, so I just got the hole tapped. That, that took about all of uh, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. I just go nice and slow. Maybe you could cut a little faster. I, I don't see any point in, in rushing it. But I just want to point out here the next step is uh, go ahead and mount uh, one screw into your, your base that you just tapped. And that will help you line up your jig. Uh, one one thing I wanted to say about these 1903A4 mounts, as you can see that it's it's not quite uh, centered over the rear sight bridge, and that is correct. Uh, there's cheap Chinese knockoff sight bases that they thought this was a problem, and they tried to correct it. And you want to stay away from those. the The center line of the bore is is not perfectly centered with the rear sight bridge. It's it's slightly off, and that's just the way the 1903A3 is is built. So, just wanted to point that out. Uh, the next thing, like I say, you you mount mount your one screw, and you get your mount in, and then you move your jig to locate. Uh, if you have one of these jigs, you buy a new or whatever. There's a center finding tool. I don't have it, so I just use a transfer punch. And, uh, this bushing and then you just kind of move your jig over you'll see it drop when it finds the hole so there I just kind of use that it doesn't have to be super precise uh, there's a lot of slop here but go for a perfect job and then you snug down your jig and then uh, you can eyeball down in there just to make sure it's all lined up Like down in there, you can see the how that's concentric circles, and that's good. And then you can remove, then you can remove the base now. That you just use the base to help line up your next hole. Uh, if we were doing something like um, unertal mounts or standard weaver mounts, these jigs are uh, 860 on center or. F uh, I think it's half inch, 50, or maybe, yeah, I think it's 500,000 center to center. Uh, you would get the jig and you could you could punch both holes and not move it. Uh, that's a good, that's a thing too. Well, after you drill your hole, don't move your jig block. You want to drill and tap everything in the one fixture. That way it's everything is perfectly aligned. So now we're ready to move it over to the drill and drill this hole. This front hole is trickier than the rear hole because we don't really, we, we could drill all the way through. Um, we, we don't really need to, that's a lot of material. So we're just gonna drill a blind hole and put it on backwards. We're just gonna drill a blind hole. You can see uh, where a mount is, it's gonna, come through the meaty part of the receiver. I've got another receiver here I could, I could show you. You've got, I don't know, three hundreds there to play with. Um, but you really realistically only need two, three threads to hold that mount down. That That's good enough. I did some pre-measuring and, and I'm going to drill a blind hole that's a 160 deep that that leaves room for the tip of our cutter and even though I'm using a bottom tap it's not it doesn't cut completely to the bottom so you have to kind of figure that in plus three threads so to accomplish that I'm I have the advantage of a digital readout on my drill uh, I've done some of these on just regular hand cheapo drill presses you could you could make a stop with a piece of tape on your bit or you could use a drill stop but we have the DRO, so we're going to use it. Uh, put my bushing in. Twenty-eight bushing. Okay, so what we're going to do? We're going to run. 
run this bit down until it touches, just touches the top of our receiver. And you can kind of feel the machine there, it's just ever so touching it. And we're going to come up to our DRO here and we're going to zero out our Z axis. And then we'll drill down until we reach that 160 thousandths number that we kind of did some figuring would be the bottom of our hole. So here we go. Cutting fluid on there. Let's keep the bit cool. Okay, you can see up here on the digital readout, we're, get, we're getting close to our number, so we'll just ever so slightly run her down. There's the 160,000s we said we wanted to cut. And you can, it's really hard to see with the camera, but um, there it is. Now I'm going to switch bits just like before. I'm going to go up one size, uh, and you'll have to redo the zeroing process. Uh, no sense watching that, it's the same thing. You just chuck your new bit in, run it down zero, and then do the cut again. Uh, the reason I do that is I couldn't find a carbide cutter in my supply that was this, the, the overboard that I wanted to use. Uh, you, maybe they do exist, but uh, uh, that's just uh, what they had available, so I'm making it work. Pause it. Okay, so I just got it off the machine and I I didn't have a depth mic I could I just wanted to check our work I used this screw I measured the top and that we were about right around 180 a little little I went a little deeper with the second cut just to make sure I had plenty of room for my tap um, you can see there we have a nice concentric it's hard to see I'm filming this with a tablet uh, bottom blind hole now you just uh, repeat the process, uh, tap, uh, use your plug tap to get it started. It's got a nice taper. And this, you, it's even more super critical to have a good feel, uh, especially when you get down to your bottom tap. As soon as you hit the bottom, you have to stop or you will snap that tap off and that's a bad day. So I'm going to tap these holes and I'll show you the completed project when we're done. Okay, so I finished tapping that blind, blind hole. Uh, take a peek down in there. Oh, it 
it's really hard to see the threads. But I got about four, th four threads in there. Uh, after you drill and tap, you, you might get a little burr here. You could put something in your Dremel tool. Uh, just hit it real slow. I'll just do this by hand. I just kind of... kind of working on this a little bit off camera but this you get the idea there you're just putting a ever slight chamfer just knocking the high spots off that should be good let's blow the dust out and here I can show you I've colored uh, four threads on a screw here so you can see what we've done here's the end of the thread so like I said three is plenty so I've I've got a four four in there and uh, this will just be this will be great